That's Nick. And that's Joseph, and today we're here to talk about Military Wives, the latest film directed by Peter Cataneo, which premiered at the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival and will be available on digital in demand May 22nd, 2020, courtesy of Bleecker Street. Do I know this person, any of this person's previous films? Yes, uh, he is a most well-renowned for his uh, 1997 debut, The Full Monty. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, since then, he's directed three films, uh, none of that I've seen, uh, the last one being 2008's The Rocker uh, okay. with uh, Rain Wilson. And uh, he's worked a lot in television since then. Um, and maybe I should get this out of the way right now, but I do have a bone to pick with Peter Cataneo because after The Full Monty, it was 97. Does this uh, involve Sigourney Weaver? It does. Oh my god. <laughs> he... I just, I just guess. <laughs> he was, uh, it was all announced. Ms. Weaver was, you know, she's doing press for Alien Resurrection. And 1997 was a good year for her. She also had the Ice Storm and Snow White Tale of Terror. And she was like, my next project is going to be, um, Peter Cataneo's Dear Rosie. He was Oscar nominated for his 1991 short of the same name. He was going to develop a feature with her. And then he just decided that he could not rehash the same material. And then look where we are now. Triggered. Okay. <laughs> anyway, well, Military Wise, which what is... What is it about? It's based on a true story. And it's uh, basically about the first group of military wives that put together the first military wives choir uh, in the UK. And there are now 75 such choirs. Um, that sounds dry as hell. It was. Uh, oh my Joseph God. did not watch this film. I'm assuming these weren't like Baptist choirs. No, no. These it's, were like crusty British white ladies. Yeah, these are crusty British white ladies. Oh my, I'm so glad I didn't watch this. It's, Go ahead. It's okay. Um, so tell us the story. It's, it's basically, uh, it's very formulaic. And in fact, I'd say this is the gender inverse of Full Monty, which of course was... I think they were, were they steel workers? Is, are there, is there nudity in it? No, no. Oh. It, but whereas Full Monty was about out of work steel workers that have to band together to do something, which has become male strippers, this is uh, a group of women that, you know, are uh, stereotypically considered stagnant, have nothing to do, coming together uh, to take their minds off of their husbands potentially dying at any point um, to, to do something artistic. Okay. Um, and so it's run by Kristen Scott Thomas, playing Kate, uh, who's a type, a very type A personality, whose child has died. Her husband is still in the military. Um, her, her, her son was killed in action. Uh, and then she comes up against Sharon Horgan, uh, who's very uh, type B, laid back, and together they end up making uh, beautiful music together. Uh, and you know, maybe it's just that we're all stuck inside and have nothing to do but there are some nice emotional peaks but yes this is very formulaic um although i what is the resolution like they're just trying to raise money for yes uh, the 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 the, the, con the dramatic conflict is very in-house like uh kristen scott thomas tells uh sharon horgan something in confidence and they're they're trying to they're invited they're overheard accidentally and invited to play at some uh big wig affair that would make everybody look terrible if they perform poorly so they're trying to they're trying to pick a song to perform and they end up making a tapestry uh, of a song based on letters they've received from their husbands or loved ones and and then putting that together into a cohesive piece. And then Kristen Saw Thomas is upset because a piece uh, of her son's dialogue is used against without her knowledge. And of course, you can imagine how that's resolved. And uh, they have a, uh, a song that does gangbusters. And there you go. Um, I do. <laughs> I really like the, the first song they practice on together as a choir is Only You from the... By Ashanti? No. Oh. By the Flying Pickets uh, <laughs> from 1983, which okay. was a song I didn't know about until I saw that film Jack and Diane about the lesbian werewolves that Kylie Minogue is in. Did you ever see that? No. Anyway, uh, it, I really it's a nice acapella song. Uh, Only you. They do a Cindy Lauper track. Uh, but yeah, it's it's very it, it's Mr. Cataneo doing what it, he seems to like to do best uh, is this homosocial bonding in a very um, heteronormative world. That's what it felt like. Uh, overall, I'd give this. Uh, I'm being generous, but three out of five stars. Oh, I'd say so. It's well done. It's well done. You know, you're not. You can't go wrong with Kristen Scott Thomas, and um, well, sometimes you can, but usually not. And uh, Sharon Horgan, who's more my experience with her is she's more of a comedic actress. 
Um, she was in that film Game Night with Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams after all. Oh, uh, nice. yeah. Uh, yeah, so she, she's very funny. She's She gets to be a, somewhat more of a well-rounded character here. Um, okay. Well, yeah. you have a little time. Uh, is there any off-topic thing you want to mention? Uh, besides... Um, a, a missed opportunity to have another Sigourney Weaver film? No. Oh, I meant something random like, you know, Justice for oh, Sherry Pie or I don't know. Justice for Sherry know. Pie. No, oh, the other point I wanted to make is that their um, choir practices were reminding me a lot of like the Schitt's, Moira Rose's Schitt's Creek. Oh, her. her uh, okay. Well, <laughs> it's about that level of pettiness in oh, some of those scenes. But all right. Is that all? Yeah, that's about it. Bye. Bye.